A dog barks when his master is attacked. I would be a coward if I saw that God's truth is attacked and yet would remain silent. John Calvin. Telling a woman that she can't be an elder is a nonsense rule. If they claim to be in the body, we let them have it. Donald Trump is going to win in 2020 by an absolute landslide. Six Christianized in the American dream. Because the New Testament is utter horse. <laughs> It was created by a bishop and a fucking emperor. That's a fact. That's like established religious fact. Sawing is a blessing from God to make you rich. Well, Jesus is like a lottery ticket. The Lord spoke to my heart. Then very few times I've ever heard God be this articulate with me. And I'm telling you word for word, these words came into my heart. I'm not asking you witness me. I'm asking you to brush his hair. That's what God hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Master's Dog False Teacher of the Week, episode 63. I'm your host, Norm the Master's Dog Dunham, aka the Evangelical Norm. So, the False Teacher of the Week segment of the Master's Dog podcast, the Master's Dog, came out of the old introduction video that I had, which was basically a two and a half minute montage. Uh, pictures and videos of false teachers set to um, a song called No Compromise by Result, used by permission. Thank you, Result. And somebody came to me and said, you know what, I don't know who all these people are. The ones I do know, some of them I thought were okay. Could you really break it down so we know who is and why they are a false teacher? And so I started with Stephen Furtick, which is who she had asked about specifically. She thought he was okay, and I broke down how he was a false teacher. And then I systematically went through that montage video. I think I added one person that wasn't in it, which was the Pope, and just talked about each one and how they qualified to be a false teacher, whether they were religious or not, I'd politicians, uh, talk show hosts, atheists, all boiled in there because I mean any one of those can be a false teacher and so now I've I got to the end of that and continued on created a new uh, introduction video that's a little more versatile I can put in and out take it uh, video clips in and out of it use it it's a little shorter it's I think it's just a little over 30 seconds so you don't have to endure two and a half minutes of an introduction uh, except for me giving the history of the podcast so all that being said, that's a little history for those of you who are new. We continue to get more and more almost every day where I'm getting two or three new subscribers over here on YouTube, and that's because of you guys who continue to like and share the videos. Uh, I appreciate it. That makes uh, the algorithm send it out to more and more people who want to see stuff like this. And then those of you who are new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. You'll get all the content that I release here on the Evangelical Norm channel on YouTube. And then you can hit me up anywhere I get uh, all, my, all my social medias. You can leave comments here, uh, Twitter at The Master's Dog, The Evangelical Norm at Twitter, or Norm Dunham over at Facebook. You can find me in all those places. Follow me, uh, torment me, whatever it is you want to do. So a uh, little bit of background. Today's False Teacher, episode 63. And this is another one where I'm like, I'm surprised that one, she never made it into the original montage uh, because she's fairly well known. And I guess just with all the other people that are out there, I mean, the plethora of false teachers, she kind of just slipped under the radar. And that's Nadia Bowles Weber, um, commonly known as the cursing pastor, pastor, uh, air quotes there, because she's not. Um, She's uh, been kind of on the public scene for, I don't know, I, I think she popped up initially the first time I saw anything about her was like the, I want to say probably while I was still pastoring in Colorado, so somewhere prior to 2007, um, when I first heard about her and started seeing her show up on the internet and stuff like that. So um, one thing I do like to do is I like to go to their webpage and let them give their own description of themselves before I kind of break down who they are. So first and foremost, there's some language warning on here. I'm not going to read the words, but you know, and still, but this is, she is the, the cool tattooed cursing pastor. And that's just apparently what the world wants. So about Nadia, this is from NadiaBullsWeber.com. Quote, 
God, please help me not be an a-hole, is about as common a prayer as I pray in my life, unquote. Nadia Bowles Weber. Nadia Bowles Weber is an ordained Lutheran pastor, founder of House for All Sinners and Saints in Denver, Colorado, the creator and host of The Confessional, and the author of three New York Times bestselling memoirs, Pastrix, The Cranky, Beautiful Faith of a Sinner and Saint, 2013 and re-released in 2021, Accidental Saints, Finding God in All the Wrong People, 2015, and Shameless, A Sexual Reformation, 2019. She writes and speaks about personal failings, recovery, grace, faith, and really whatever the hell she wants to. She always sits in the corner with the other weirdos. Subscribe to The Corners to receive her writing in your inbox weekly. So there's her blog. In 2021, Nadia took a leap and opened up a pop-up social network for prayer and connection called The Chapel. Everyone is welcome. Just don't be an a-hole. So there's all uh, her all about her... Um, so let's get a little more in depth in who Nadia Bowles Weber is. So, um, born in April, on April twenty second, nineteen sixty nine, she is an author, Lutheran minister, and public theologian. Uh, served as the founding pastor of House for All Saint, Sinners and Saints, congregation of the ELCA, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America in Denver, Colorado, until July eighth of twenty eighteen. Um, she also a three time New York best time selling New York Times bestselling author, known for her unusual approach to reaching others through her church. She has produced works in the church that scholar and writer Diana Butler Bass considers to be part of a new reformation. So um, she grew up in a fundamentalist Christian family and basically apparently in Colorado Springs. And then, of course, probably not a real, I don't know, I, I Obviously not a family that had a real good relationship with the gospel that made a bit my, I mean, it says a fundamentalist Christian family. I mean, it's Wikipedia. So what does that really mean? It could be, I mean, she could have been vineyard. She could have been a uh, Pentecostal, just could have been a legalist, but any of these churches, anything that doesn't have a real good, uh, solid grasp on preaching the gospel, repentance and faith, um, you know, the knowledge of being a sinner, it's, it probably had a lot of works involved in it, stuff like that. I don't know what religion it was, but it says she began to acquire tattoos in 1986 at the age of 17 um, on her arms. Uh, those present on her arms mark the liturgical year and the story of the gospel. So... Um, obviously, again, ELCA, Evangelical Lutheran Church, which is one of the first to really go super liberal. Um, I, I want to say as early as 20, 2004 or five, maybe even three, is when they um, ordained their first gay uh, pastor, priest, um, V. Jean Robertson. And so, I mean, very, but they're very liturgical as well. So she's got the, the liturgical calendar uh, on her arms. Um, she says she became an alcoholic and drug abuser and often felt like one of society's outsiders. Um, by 1991, Bowles Weber became sober and as of 2020 has remained so for 28 years. Great. Prior to her ordination, which is not real, she was a stand-up comedian and worked in the restaurant industry. So again... I wonder if she ever crossed paths with Todd, uh, Todd Friel. It would be interesting. I know he's talked about her, but I've never heard anything. So uh, she felt called to service in 2004 when she was asked to eulogize a friend who had committed suicide. 2008, she was ordained in the ELCA, which is not a legitimate ordination. Uh, she started her own church, uh, the House for All Sinners and Saints, shortened to just the house in Denver. One third of her church is part of the LGBT community. Um, she also has a minister of fabulousness. Okay. Minister of fabulousness. Got it. Um, yeah. I just, I, I got to let that sit in for a minute. Stuart, who is a drag queen. Her church is always also very welcoming to people with drug addiction, depression, and even those who are not believers of her faith. So again, 
a lot of these just squishy churches that are like, if, if you have a church and an atheist says they're comfortable or somebody who is not a Christian says, well, yeah, I'm really comfortable. I love coming. Then obviously you're not preaching the gospel because it's not that we want them to go away or not be that we want them to be uncomfortable because that's what conviction of sin does. There's no conviction of sin in a church like this. Um, Bowles Weber spends nearly 20 hours each week writing her weekly 10 minute sermon. Wow. 10 minutes, 20 hours to do 20, 10 minutes. I'm trying to think. I mean, I guess that could be, I mean, I'm sure my pastor and as I've prepared sermons in the past, a 45 minute sermon has probably taken me, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever put 40 full hours into sermon prep, but okay. As a feminist, this is, this is just, this takes the cake. And it almost like I don't have to say anything else because Wikipedia did it for me. In 2018, she called for women to send her their purity rings to be melted down into a sculpture of a vagina, which she regarded as represented the healing of the psychic damage induced by the 90s purity movement. At the Makers Conference on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2019, Bolz Weber gave the scripture, the sculpture, scripture, to American feminist and political activist Gloria Steinem. She speaks at conferences across the world, and she's given talks about how faith and feminism coexist. So I don't have to. I really don't have to say anything else, do I? I mean, this really said it all. I mean, she is a false teacher. One, she embraces essentially universalism. Nobody, nobody goes to hell. Everybody is saved. Doesn't believe in hell. Um, very open to the LGBT community, which is, you know, again, there's no sin in what you're doing. Obviously, she's got a drag queen as her minister of fabulousness. Um, and essentially, I mean, she's part of a defunct uh, denomination, a defunct portion of the, uh, the Episcopal Church, which is almost completely gone liberal at this point but the elca is completely far gone so far out of orthodoxy that i mean i know you don't even need to to try to recognize anything orthodox in there because it's all gone it's all completely gone i mean to go from v Jean robinson to nadia bolds weber you know both embracing uh a lack of, of sin within the LGBT community. So saying, you know, love is love, do whatever you want. So taking away from the gospel of Christ, ignoring the fact that Jesus died to pay the penalty for sin. So, and they're just telling people to continue of sin, doing exactly what Satan did in the garden, questioning the word of God, and then taking away the penalty for sin. Did God really say, surely you will not surely die, Right. So again, these are people who follow after the path of Satan. They question the word of God, and then they, they remove the penalty for sin. To encourage people to, to not study the word, and to not repent of their sin. Which is exactly what is basically needed uh, for repentance. I mean, reading the word is, is going to be where God is going to draw them to repentance, and repentance is what's going to put them in position, in positionally, in Christ. None of these are works. I don't believe they're works. They are gifts from God. So again, this is what they do. This is why she qualifies as a false teacher, because she is denying the word of God, denying the, the, the sin that is, is there requiring the salvation that Christ offers. She has a no gospel church. And a, a, again, it's, it's not a church. She's not a pastor. None of these things apply to this woman. She's a heretic um, outside of orthodoxy, and she needs to repent and come to Christ. And again, being in the position she's in, and I, I say this all the time, and I firmly believe this, um, that she will stand by while all the people that she has misled, who they think they are Christians, who think they're saved, are going to stand before Christ and say, Lord, Lord, did we not do these things in your name? And she'll have to hear, as he says to each one of those people, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you, before those words fall upon her own ears, and she with them are all cast into the lake of fire. So again, my prayer is not just to, to condemn what is happening, and it, it, is, it is worthy of condemnation. My prayer is that she would repent 
excuse me, and come to faith in Christ and that she would start teaching the gospel and start sharing with those that she's led astray the true gospel of Christ, that they could come and repent and put their faith in Christ. So there you go, guys. Episode 63, this week's false teacher, Nadia Bowles Weber. Um, don't go to her website. Don't, don't you, I mean, you can go to her website if you want to read, but don't read her blog. Don't check out this social media thing. It's all going to be just, uh, headache and and nonsense so um thanks guys for for being here again if you have i'm open to question comments snyder marks leave them in the, the comments here um at the master's dog or at evangelical norm on twitter norm dunham on facebook connect with me hit me up if you have any suggestions for false teachers i'm always willing to continue to make the list grow i've got six or seven on there right now so We'll just keep making it longer. So send me your suggestions for False Teacher of the Week. I'll look into them and see if we can add them to the list. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. And until next time, Soli Deo Gloria.